All right, so here we are. Uh, we got a special drop for you guys midweek uh, where we are dropping a full close, the raw footage, right? I'm gonna break it down to the ridiculous. Understand what I'm doing during this process. There's a lot of rapport building at the beginning because the greatest enemy is the client's fear. So it's so important to help them relax at the beginning of this process, take their hand, be the assistant buyer, and lead them through the process. Let's see what we got. Do you need me to take off my shoes? No, no you're All fine. Alright, cool. Sorry. I was asked. He's out here with some training, and that's Brandon. This is uh, just, just doing a little Howdy. Training. Okay, you so guys we must, have videos you guys and cameras. Yeah, he's <laughs> training, so I travel all over the United States doing this. And, uh, cool. you know, you guys love, you guys nice like it back here. Right? Are, Are you guys from Texas originally? Born and raised. Born and raised. He was born Brandon. and raised. I have been here since I was four years old. All right, so I'll give you my accent. You guys guess where I'm from. You got a pocket car over here. You're damn sure not from yeah. here. Yeah, I have my engineer, the one that puts all the designs. He's going to be here in a couple minutes, too. He's going to pull up the design and everything. So you're from where? I'm from Boston originally. You got a pocket, you that? pocket car over here, pocket in the yard. That's how we <laughs> talk. We have, like, little speech impediments over there. But if I talk like that, people would think, like, you know, I couldn't pronunciate words. Oh, well. So, um, if there's just a small corner of a table, oh, I can wait, find too much. We have to, I clear the table off. Perfect, you. perfect. And I printed you out all the electric usage. Yes. Perfect. You see, Jen Bills. I noticed for the last two years. So the what we have to realize is that you guys. It's not that you're using more power, it's just they're charging you more for every one of the kilowatts. Right. So that's the reason why yeah. like, people are kind of putting one and one together and realizing they're just getting like straight up nickel and dimed. Um, when Reggie gets here in a second, he's going to uh, basically verify everything on the usage. But the picture that you sent me, I took the last 12 months of your usage, I figured out the true average, and that's how I kind of designed the system. So you guys get most of the sun on the front side of the house. Okay. Yep, so the idea is we completely fill up the roof with panels and kind of like break down how this all works. Um, Sam Brandon, if you guys wanted to kind of take a seat. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, how do you guys like the living back here? It's pretty nice. Hey, we love it. <laughs> hey, that's cool. I, I, I'm, I actually live in New Hampshire and they call it Cow Hampshire. And then the people from Mass, they call Mass Holes. And then the people from Maine, they call Maniacs. So You have no cows there. <laughs> we have we have a couple if you go really north. But yeah, so um, I would show people, you know, that's the end goal is to get you guys an electric bill that says do not pay. All right, so this is my first time meeting this family. It's so important to build a rapport at the very beginning of the process. And as I go through this entire presentation, you have to understand that I need to sell the destination, not the plane. The destination is the negative electric bill. The destination is ownership. The destination is going from a consumer to a producer. The destination is taking a liability into an asset. The destination is renting to owning. You know, the idea is that we can produce enough power that you go from being a consumer to a producer and you start producing all your power on site. Um, really kind of like the way that this works and um, Reggie will be here in a second, but I'm going to kind of show you apples to apples, just uh, bottom line bull situations, what it would be with the utility company and then ultimately um, owning your power and kind of just being free from the electricity. So it's so important that I set up a roadmap or an agenda of what's going to happen during this presentation. And I like to refer to my slicks to really break it down to the ridiculous so I can give direction to what's going to be happening during the presentation. Understand the greatest enemy is the client's fear. So if I can help them relax during the beginning part of this presentation, you know, the closes become natural, right? And I'm going to help create that decision, otherwise known as closing. And, you know, kind of the way that our grid works right now, a lot of the power does come from out of state. That's why they give us all these kind of fees and surcharges. The idea is the sun goes up, the bills go down, you know, you produce all the power on site right here. So kind of, I'll kind of start laying this all out for us and then go through this, but this is what the new system looks like. It's a lot more low profile. It's a, a little bit more aesthetic, but the idea is that it's going to, each panel is going to produce more power. So you need less panels to kind of produce everything here in the household. Um, I always show people this. Texas is a state that this isn't about like saving 20, 30 bucks. It's how we can put like tens of thousands of dollars back in your pocket. This is my fourth, like fifth, sixth day ever in Texas. 
So I travel all around the United States and I train a lot of the companies and I grew up here. Yeah. Do you guys ever go to Junction, Texas? I've been through there. Yeah, I did. He's a, probably traveled more than do you, do I Do you like have. like hunting or fishing? I don't. That no. would be more my end. Your your end? <laughs> yeah. you, you like motorcycles? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I had a zero motorcycle. Do you know what those are? It's electric. Yeah. And there's no gas or anything and I sold it because I almost got hit like four times and I was like, all right, I don't want to like, cause it makes no noise. And now you realize we're in the oil industry. So the no gas thing is kind of like, yep. <laughs> That's funny. That's, uh, no, I actually just cleaned fish today because my brother had gone fishing. I have a brother in visiting and they'd gone fishing. Yeah. So he brought me some I, fish. I like fishing. It's just the only thing is I'm terrible at catching stuff. Like I'll, I'll sit there and I get all negative, but then when I'm positive, oh, yeah. no, if you got to be positive. If, if, if they're not biting, I don't like to fish. Yeah. My ideal fishing is sitting on the bank with a hook in the water and a cooler beer. <laughs> There you go. That's a nice little setup right there. So, you know, ultimately the reason why we pay so much in power, a lot of people uh, were affected by the Texas freeze when we all oh, had yeah. that. Yeah. And what happened was the grid was stressed where they had to kind of, uh, you know, obviously have the, the power went from the power plant to the house. Yeah. But re re what people don't realize is a lot of the stress actually comes from the heat in Texas. Um, the first one is zero dollars out of pocket. When I would hear that, I would say, okay, what's the catch? The catch is United Co-op, Encore, Centerpoint, they're all the monopolies. And you've lived here for how many years? 14. 14, yeah. So I gotta ask this because you're like way off the road. Have you ever had somebody come and knock on your door? I had a guy pull up one. We had used but you were one. you were in the front, babe. Yeah. If you'll no, I'm talking about Jimmy. Yeah, but you were you had the RV in the front. We had a guy come up here. No, this whenever he finally came up here that last oh, time. Oh yeah, I, oh, I didn't know that. I was in the house and he came pulling up. We got a Jimmy up front. Oh yeah. Fifty five, cameo side Jimmy, and he kept bugging me, wanting me to wanting us to sell it, and I told him no, and uh, he decides to pull up the drive one time. And I met him at the door with a gun, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't, don't come to our house. Oh, yeah, you're, I mean, you would. Well, normally our gates are closed. At yeah. that time, we didn't Somebody have. Somebody's going to pull up the road, they're going to get met with a gun unless we yeah. got your gun. Well, hey, that's good, you know what I mean? That's, uh, my dad, he works in the Department of Corrections back up in Massachusetts. Well, he did. He hurt his leg and that's had kind of like some bad health conditions. But, uh, you know, he, he worked in all the prisons. I don't know if you remember the uh, football player, Aaron Hernandez, the football player that hung himself. He worked in the Max facilities. He told me out of all the prisons he ever worked in was a women's prison. He's like, I would never work in a women's oh, prison. Oh, no. I, never. I, I worked in men's field. Yep. And believe me, I would much rather work with men than women. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Yeah. So, it's not very comfortable, sweetheart. Oh, no, I was just under... Oh, bed, so pure air up. just all over. <laughs> <laughs> so I always kind of start like the the five major questions and you know before I get into this I, I really want to thank you for the time you're giving me I know it's late and I always try to work around you guys' schedule see I would be up at five yeah I, I go to bed at nine. Oh wow cool <laughs> so, but you I know up till midnight. and Come he's ahead doesn't get up till he's eight the or night owl and or when he's home. See, I, I've been married for four years, and my wife is from Peru, and she likes to go to bed early. I like to go to bed late, but if I come into the bed too late, what? I've got to be very quiet. No, see, he comes to bed when I do, but he sits and watches TV. I got you. Cool. And how long have you guys been married? We going on 13 years. 13 years. What's the secret with marriage? I always ask this. Don't try to change them. Don't try to change him. Exactly. Yeah. He is my third husband. Uh-huh. She's my third wife. Well, hey. Third time's a third charm, time. right? right. I, 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 was, I was married to my children's father for 20 years. Wow. I was married to the last one for way too long. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody tried to change me. Yeah. And that was the one thing he said when we met. He says, I love you because you are so independent. That's good. And I am... I am very capable of mm -hmm. taking care of myself. Yeah, I don't have to worry about her. She 
he goes he goes to Midland every week to work. He's not home for I, the week. I went to Midland the last time I was in Texas. Yeah. Midland and Odessa, they're yeah. two towns right next to each other. Yeah. That's where I was. I was I went to a house that I swear was like a ten million dollar house. Oh and yeah. I Googled it and it was like nine hundred thousand. Like it was the the houses are they have some big, big, big boy houses and like because that house in Boston would have been like five, six million dollars. This house here would have, would sell for two fifty out there. Yeah, a year old house like this. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's so ridiculous priced out there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, I always like tell everybody like first off, I want to thank you for the time that you're giving me. I always tell everybody I like to keep this somewhat exploratory, meaning my job as a professional is to show you apples to apples both situations. All right, now that I've successfully built the rapport to where I need it to be, I need to go into a comfortable get down to business statement. You know, I really want to thank you for the time that we're going to share. It needs to become from a genuine place. And you want to state the intent on what's going to happen. It's really pre-framing and involving them with this process to be able to take their hand and take them to the finish line. I'm also a consumer, so whenever I put myself in this situation, I want to find somebody that understands it like the back of their hand, but I don't want to deal with some long drawn out process. I want to see, hey, this is what my situation is now. This is the situation I could go in. Um, the major questions that I always get is what happens to my roof? What if I was to move? How much would it cost me? Who maintains it? And when would I start saving money? All right, so the next step, understand that every buyer has a psychology behind why they say yes or no. You are the product and service. The excitement, the enthusiasm is 51% of this entire sales presentation. And then genuinely trying to help people, okay? But the psychology behind no is lingering questions. I want to bring those up beforehand, right? These are the five major questions that we receive. What happens to my roof? What happens if I move? What's the cost? Because I want to play offense, right? I want to bring this up to them rather than them say, what happens if I move? Um, really play offense and bring up those lingering questions. As far as your roof, it keeps the house a lot cooler in the summertime. Now, um, I, I've had a long day, I've done like seven of these. Did you mention that you guys needed to get a new roof? Yes. Okay, so that's one thing that we do do, is we would not put the panels on until we did a new roof. But a lot of the way that we do it is we can bundle in the roof with the solar. And the way that it works is as long as you guys have federal income tax, you guys will take advantage of a federal tax credit that um, actually expires at the end of the year because it goes down. And then the following year, there is no tax credit. So a lot of these systems need to be installed and turned on by the end of the year for you to be eligible for that tax incentive. Um, as far as if you are to ever move, it transfers over the same way United Co-op would. The cost to you is we're going to try to be able to take the money that you give to the utility company, shift or redirect it into something you own. So we eliminate this side to give you this side, and then eventually you kind of have the end game. Um, there's three specific approvals I need, and I always let people, because some people don't read the fine print here, is if the utility company was to deny the application we submit, you're stuck. You, you can't do this because the system is grid dependent. Right. Right now the meter spins in one direction. Every time yeah. it spins, you guys turn the lights on, turn the lights on, turn the TV on, turn it off. You guys are paying 15, 16, 17 cents. When the system is on the roof, the idea is that meter starts spinning in the opposite direction and you go from being a consumer to a producer. So understand if you're not getting a lot of interest, if they're not interested, it's because you're not creating curiosity. Well, how do you create curiosity? You have to paint a picture. You need to create imagery. You need to use body language. Notice how I'm explaining sun goes up, bills go down. Meter goes in this direction, now it's been in that direction. I'm creating imagery to create interest during the process. But the idea is that if we do get the three approvals, we are on the hook to maintain the system for 25 years. Um, as far as saving money, that's not always feasible when you get a brand new roof and you bundle it in with the solar. However, um, there are a few things we want out of it, but the idea is that you would be one of the fortunate ones that would not pay a penny out of pocket and that we can show a good amount of savings over time. All right, now understand the opposite of a nasty word like sign the contract or pitch, that's one of the worst ones, is glamour words. Glamour words are commonly known words that are uncommonly used. Notice how I said it's not always feasible for people to actually save money, but you may be one of the fortunate ones. Right, that's what's going to build excitement during the presentation. Commonly known words that are uncommonly used. So um, really the, what we want out of it, and I kind of break this down, 
um, to being over, going over the questions. I'll create the chart. I'll explain to you what I believe. RM, CSS, which are the major questions, roof move, cost, service, savings. And then we actually go into the design and the numbers. And then the ideas. We will look for the reasons it does not make sense. If we find the reason it doesn't make sense, you just stay with the utility company. We're only able to identify the benefits that we would submit an application to start the approval process. So for us, um, you said you lived here for how many years? All right, now understand how important it is to create a roadmap, right? If I can show them the direction of the way the presentation is gonna go, it's gonna transcend certainty to the buyer. Notice that they're going to react to the range of my voice, the volume, the pace, and the diction. But they can see that if I'm certain that they feel as if they're making the right decision, like again, we are the assistant buyers, we're taking their hand and leading them through the process. 14. 14. Since 2009. Okay. Eight. I came home in seven. So yeah, I got the house in eight, 2008. Perfect. So the first thing that we ask is to utilize you as a reference, right? We utilize the whole entire zip code. So obviously you're not right on the street. It's not like, you know, you're, you way, back, you're way back <laughs> here. But, you know, if we had anybody from the zip code or within a five mile radius that said who else has the system, we're able to say, hey, we have a few systems in the area. This is what they like about the system, but this is how they ultimately benefited from it. Secondly is obviously not just going and bragging to people saying we didn't have to pay any of the upfront costs and then keeping like one of the newer signs up. It doesn't really matter with the sign because you're so far off the road. You could put a, you don't have to put the sign up, you know, um, obviously it helps us in, in, in neighborhoods just being, being close to other homes because they see the new technology and then they're like, oh, I like that. Right. They must have won the lottery because when I, before I got into solar, I'd look at a lot of these homes and be like, wow, they're rich because it's very expensive to right. buy a system. Yeah. So what we do is we go through these questions. Uh, they're called, can we pay questions? And these questions will kind of ultimately determine um, how we pick the home. But the three questions. Look, babe, he's left handed. I'm dude. a lefty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I golf lefty. So is my husband. <laughs> you're, you're, you're lefty and everything? or? No, he's pretty I'm much ambidextrous. I write life lefty, I throw righty. I play hockey lefty, I bat lefty, I'm all screwed up, so. I shoot both arm, both hands, uh, <laughs> master marksman, and I... So you can shoot like this and like this. Yeah. And I used to be able to write both hands when my teacher made me stop. Wow. Oh, what do you, what do you, uh, sh what do you, sh like, what kind of shooting do you do? Target shooting or? Anything. Anything? You ever do those, like, clay tiles that go up in the air? No, I don't do that. I've no. got a, I've got those a range right here. Those are clay pigeons. Clay They're pigeons? Got a range here. Yeah. yeah. Right over there. I, I had some friends, they went up in like a helicopter and like there's like these okay. hogs or something. I guess they just mowed them. Oh, uh, we have something. wild hogs all around yeah. here. Yeah. That's cool. My neighbor's got a thousand yard range. He's there you go. Right there. And you have good neighbors. Obviously they're not close, but. No, we don't ever get to see them. We, yeah, <laughs> we don't. Yeah, we're, we're pretty quiet to yeah. ourselves. That's cool. That's cool. All right, now you have to understand the importance of building trust. Right? There's only one objection we need to overcome, and that's trust. Right? Sir, the biggest objection I need to overcome with you is like is trust. It's like having a cell phone with no service. All you can really do is play games, and I'm not here to play games. So level with me. How much of what I say do you actually believe? Right? Because once they trust you, once they like you, and if you can make it make sense, that's how we can create the decision. So these questions, like I said, they're pretty cut and dry. Uh, you know, They're about your childhood. I'm just kidding. No, about your childhood. Um, I grew up on a farm. I raised cows. I pulled calves all my life. I showed cattle. I showed hogs. In Texas? In Texas, how right around from, here. How right around here? Yeah, I actually grew up outside of Burleson. So I'll tell you a story. Um, my trip, because I tour all over the United States and I train companies, and um, I currently live in, in Naples, Florida. I have a house up in New Hampshire. So we left Naples, we went to El Paso, Texas. I didn't wear sunscreen, I looked like Ru Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, we went from El Paso to Houston. We were supposed to go from Houston to Dallas to Laredo and the flight got canceled. So we drove from Houston to Laredo. Have you ever uh, been to Laredo? So listen to this, it's 11.30 at night. The kid's like, dude, did you book a hotel? I was like, all right, I'll get a hotel tonight. I go to book the hotel. I'm like, all right, this one looks good. It says Nuevo Laredo, which I thought was a part of Laredo. We get to the border, happens Nuevo Laredo's in Mexico. It's 1 a.m. We're trying to cross the border. The border guard's like, what are you guys doing? 
And I'm like, dude, we just booked a hotel. It's seven minutes away. Let's just go, guys. Well, we won't have problems crossing in the morning. He's like, dude, you do not want to cross the border at 1 a.m. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, we'll be fine, right? At six minutes, we'll be okay. And uh, so we're at the border, and he's like, you guys can go, but they were shooting bullets at us three days ago. And I was like, what do you mean oh, yeah. they were shooting bullets? Yo. I was like, I'm going to eat this hotel. We're going to make a U-turn. And we ended up staying at the good old Red Roof Inn down there. Yeah. So, I've, worked, um, I've worked wells down there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So you've been in the industry, the oil industry, for a while. Yeah. 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 Cool. You used to go down there in the company. Most companies, when you go to a well, the guy, the it's it's no no weapons at all. Wow. When you go down there, it's you're not going on my local location unless you have a gun. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we didn't cross because otherwise they wouldn't have been here. So. Right. Well, they'll kill yeah. you down there. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll actually. Want I was to joking with my friends. I was like, they're not going to screw with me. I'm from the Irish cartel. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh yeah yeah i was kidding they don't they're like, care they're like go ahead bro you can go but i'm not coming with you so mm -hmm. um but the the first question we go over is just in, in the past five years has there been a product or service that has led you to be vocal about your satisfaction meaning if a company went above and beyond for you and did everything they said they were going to do would you go above and beyond for us yes. the way word of mouth works or see the marketing always it's like if you really like the landscaper or restaurant that's how that, that's yeah. me Perfect. So the word of mouth is uh, the first thing we but, want. But to I will. All right. So understand the importance when I go over the questions. Is anything that I say makes sense? But if I can get them to express the reasons on why it's going to make sense for them to go solar, it's critical that I write down their answers because I can come back to that at the end. To, well, what you told me was, and that really allows them to see the vision on why this is going to make sense for their situation. They sell themselves on doing it. So you. That's like when I have to deal with any of our companies that mm -hmm. you know our services yep if they are good i will let everybody know Perfect. if they are bad i will let everybody right. know <laughs> 10 to 1 i would say you could, you could have a hundred good reviews you have one bad review and people are always going to look at the bad review because everyone that has a good review isn't going to say hey this company did great but something goes wrong and i look at the bad reviews you have to before i look at any good reviews agreed and uh you know that's what i i, I tell people is People care about um, you know the quality, but also the service that you get. And that's then, I just had work down at my done down at my mom and dad's house, electrical work, and uh, the guys were great. Yep. You know, I mean, they came out, they took care of my problem, and it's just like a, that's just what we do. That's we have an appliance people that come in here when we need to have work done, and I tell everybody about them. Mm -hmm nice that's a, that's what we want and obviously you know you don't live in a cookie cutter neighborhood but the idea is the same way that when i talked it was your daughter in law your daughter in law yeah you know she it was funny because i was getting the snow cone and one of her daughters <laughs> is like it's funny because you know i didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth um our grandchildren are adopted through the foster system yeah, they were they were they were nice girls. They and are very nice. One of the girls was like, I was I was like, yeah, I'll just get a small, and she's like, well, if you get a medium, you get the better straw. <laughs> Good sound. And I was that like, it she, was it was probably violet. Was it was the, the little one. Yeah, yeah that's violet. It was the little one. She's like, if you get the medium, you get the better straw. I was like, you know what? Just because you asked, give me the medium. I'll give you five bucks. You know, I end up getting a good snow cone. It was good because it was a hot day. Um, but uh, the the second thing that almost everybody doesn't recognize at the beginning, but then two, three, four years down the road, they realize is the peace of mind behind protecting yourself from inflation. Right now. Normally the rate goes up anywhere between four and five percent every year. Um, typically with solar, the rate will never increase by more than 2.9 percent a year. With this program, uh, we would exempt you from any sort of rate increases, meaning you would have what's called a zero percent escalator. You'll never see an increase. The number that Reggie's going to show you based on the system size would be the exact amount that you would end up paying for power. So I was uh, tell people, it's like I went into a subway the other day and I was like, can I get a $5 foot long? You remember those? Oh yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? They said, we haven't had those for years. And I was like, all right, well, let me get a foot long. She's like, $11. I was like, okay, well, there's no more $5 foot long. Same with gas prices that continue to go up. And then, you know, the biggest thing that I need people to understand where the light bulb goes off is right now we're forced to rent our power. We've never had option A compared to option B. It's like renting versus owning. 
If I pulled a checkbook out of my pocket, I said, I'll buy the house from you right now. You guys can continue living here. You just need to write me a check every month and I'd become a landlord. People wouldn't do that. I, I, we, we've yep. looked at wind power, solar power, believe yep. me. We Perfect. know. Perfect. <laughs> we so know. The ownership and just being free from the utility company is what we want. These are the 10 pillars or reasons why people go solar. All right, now that we've laid out the roadmap for these families, it's so important that we explain ownership, right? But one of the psychologies behind why somebody's gonna say no is because they don't understand all of the benefits. That's why I'm going back to my slips, the 10 main reasons why families are actually moving forward with this process. Now, she printed these out, Reggie. I just wanted you to look at these. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like all their usage based on the exact kilowatts that they've used. Okay. And then um, I want to make sure that the system can produce as much power as possible um, for Cindy. And I apologize, what was your first name? Daryl. Cindy and Daryl. So, Cindy and Daryl. Um, and I'm Taylor, Reggie, Brandon, Sam, and I'm, I apologize. Adley. Adley? Adley, like Ad, ad in a bag of legs. Adley. 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 I've never met an Adley before, so that's -E -E. cool. Adley, okay. Well, I won't, cool. I won't forget that. <laughs> so, uh, this is kind of the way that I'm going to break it down for you. Um, right now, you get 100% of your power coming from the electric company. Um, you don't get any sort of added home value by staying with the power company. You don't get any sort of tax credit staying with the utility company. And the rate can go up, we always say 5 to 6% a year if you were to take the averages. Oh, yeah. Now, he's looking at all the usage to kind of match everything up. But if I was to ask you, what do you think the true average, if you were on, you know Bob Barker, the guy from yes. Price is Right? So if you were on we're, that- We're old <coughs> enough, we right, know Bob I, Barker. I like Bob Barker. I was referring to Bob Barker, the guy from Price is Right. But if you were to both say, if you were to take your last 12 months of power based on the amount that you pay, what would you say is the true average? Not your heart attack bill, the one no, that's really no, high. No, we, but we the, the average, and, and my average, what I figure is $200 a month. 200 okay, nice and even number, easy math for me. Um, would you say it's about the same, 200 I think it's one more. Okay, we'll, we'll she knows more about the No, it, it's not. We very seldom have a $300 bill. And do you have $100 bills too? Or yes. It, all right, so let's just say 200 it, This is just showing you... Uh, it, it may be a little more. Yep. Maybe 225 So let's say 200 to keep it even. And if it's 225 it just shows you more savings. Um, and Reggie's going to show us the exact number because he's going to take the last 12 months. But uh, the $200 a month is like donating 2400 bucks every year. You don't get anything, you turn the lights on, you turn the lights off. It's $2,400 based on a $200 bill in one year. If I take the $2,400 and I multiply it by 10, it's $24,000. Oh yeah. In 20 years, it's $48,000. And in 30 years, it's $72,000. If the utility company called you tomorrow and said, hey, guess what, you guys have been loyal for the next 30 years, we will never raise your rate, which I think we both know <laughs> it's gonna happen. So that's just if that were to happen with inflation, that seventy-two thousand is easily over a hundred thousand dollars that you end up paying to the utility company just to turn your lights on and turn the lights off. So this kind of breaks down uh, the situation that you're currently in uh, with the utility company. Um, the next thing I kind of go over is you know the reason that I believe this makes sense. Like you already looked into it, you understand the ownership aspect. But I believe that we should have freedom of choice. I believe that the utility company should have competition. And I always ask people, when you initially moved in the home, people don't hesitate to call the utility company. But at that time, when you were moving the furniture in, saying, hey, I need to turn on my power, if they said they needed to send a representative out, like I'm here now, and they were to say, hey, we actually have two options. The first option is never ending renting. And the second option gives you the power of owning it. It's just you produce clean energy. Like I said, sun goes up, bills go down. Um, the way that the system would actually work is there's something called an inverter. Do you know if the meter's on this side, that side of the home? So right here? It's a, as you came up you the, walked almost, the walk. Almost by it. Gotcha. And it's, the meter is on the house or is it on a pole? It's, it's on, on a pole. pole. It's on a pole. Okay. Yeah. So right. the idea is there's something called an inverter that goes on the side of the home that will convert the DC to AC, um, which is how the sunlight converts into the electricity. The inverter is then connected to the meter and the meter is now able to spin kind of in the opposite direction. So that kind of breaks down how solar works compared to, you know, being on a, a archaic model that we refer to as the grid. 
So that just kind of breaks, uh, breaks that down for you guys. And then I always try to go over any additional questions you have, but the roof, like I said, um, we would factor in the roof into the system. The move, it transfers over just like uh, United would. The cost, we're gonna redirect the left to the right. Uh, the service, uh, we would be on the hook to maintain and warranty everything for 25 years. It's like a 100,000 mile warranty. Typically, there's homes in California, systems go 30, 40 years. And the idea is that you know we can show you savings um, immediately um, without you paying anything up, up, up out of pocket. Um, keep in mind we are adding a roof, so you know the idea is that all that money in rent that gets put into a dumpster gets put into a piggy bank. So that's just kind of the the basics of that. The two other questions I get is what happens to my property tax? Um, there's something called the Clean Energy Act, so the property tax doesn't go up. Um, you're exempt from any sort of property taxes. And then it doesn't. Good, because ours just went up 150,000. Yep. Well, that's the that's Uncle Sam getting you. You know, we don't really have that that second option. So um, that just kind of lays out the major questions I get, and then you know it doesn't affect like the homeowners insurance or anything like that. And then um, Reggie's just inputting the last usage right here, and mm -hmm. it's going to show us the design because I want to make sure it's accurate as possible. I could put together a a, a basic design, but. It's better if he shows every kilowatt to the exact month so we can match up the production to your consumption. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, how that kind of lays out. Um, is there any specific questions that you know you guys might have uh, you know thought about that? No, know? I actually use solar on some of my units out there. So Cool. Do you guys own a few properties? No, with no, what he does, oh, his oh, gotcha. work. And you said your mom lives in the house in the front. Uh-huh. And um, They are completely tree covered. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I saw it because that's the biggest killer for See, solar. See, I don't know. And I was thinking, I think the birdhouse may be too old, the roof, because the, put anything on top of that. Yeah. the electricity comes through to them. But, yeah, they are completely tree covered. When you look at the satellite, you can't see their house. And the color, what is it a shingle roof? Yeah. No, ours is shingle. Yeah. Yours is shingle. Um, theirs, theirs is metal. Ours is shingle. And w what color are the shingles? Gray. Gray, okay. Charcoal. So when he inputs and when we put the new roof on and then we put the solar on top of the roof, it protects the roof. We have to install the roof. We wait 10 to 14 days through a process called baking. The roof right. will bake in and then we install the panels. Um, but what color roof specifically would you like? So buying is not a spectator sport, it's an involvement sport. And if I can throw them into the future, involve them with this process and get them to start thinking in the future, now they're gonna start visualizing what it's like with the final, uh, the final product. We were actually looking at metal. Okay. So the thing, that a lot of people want metal roofs because they don't have to deal with it, but the thing is with solar, it's gonna protect the roof right. because the panels absorb the sunlight. So I tell people, if you stay with a composite shingle roof, we can do a gray roof, we can do a black roof. Gray but well. gray, Don't want so, black. Okay, gray it is. So gray composite shingles um, is what we'll put up there. And then uh, pretty much, like I said, that just lays out what your situation is right now. Now, with the solar, once he gets the system fully designed for us, then um, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the design and we'll kind of show you this side of the spectrum on exactly what it's going to be to own the system. Um, and then after that, we do something called an engineering report. We'll send a site surveyor out here. They'll fly a drone above the home. They'll take all the measurements, like the blueprints. After we get the approval from the engineering, we'll submit an application to the utility company. If the utility company approves the project, then we go to the town, we submit a permit, we pay for all that. Once we get the permit back from the town, then we schedule a date for it to be installed. We don't need permits out here. Don't need them? Well, that's good. For the most part, no. Some towns we don't need them. So that's, we're, 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 yep. in, we're, we're in the boonies. All right. <laughs> so if that's the case, our company submits right away. And then uh, once we get the utility approval, we schedule a date for it to all be installed. Like I said, we do roof, then the solar. After everything is fully installed, then the system is usually typically inspected where the utility company comes. And to be very blunt with you, they like to drag their feet. What I mean by that is <laughs> you get to get the system installed. The system is not turned on the day after. Right. Um, what happens is we install the system. 
and then 60 days after the system is installed is when you'd have your first fixed payment as far as um, you know paying the system instead of paying the utility company. Right. So that kind of, uh, like I said, lays out all the system. Do you know um, what we're looking at for the design? So have you traveled anywhere outside of Texas? Oh yeah. Where's your favorite place to visit? Well, I haven't been a lot of Perfect. places. Daryl's probably been more places than me. Now, when my children were small, we actually worked a ranch in Colorado. Really? That's beautiful. That's We actually have been back here for five years. We were in Montana for four years. Montana's for beautiful. Well, we weren't on the pretty side. No, we were on the wall side. But I actually... Like the, the Lewis and Clark River and stuff? At, it Missouri was, River, it's called, I think. Sorry, is that the house right there? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We were in. We were uh, 50 That's miles it. from Williston, from North Dakota. North Dakota. Question: uh, There's not much. It might be very small, and I just noticed a very tiny bit. We might not need to. But how do you feel about doing a little trimming on the front tree? That's fine. Okay, it would just be a little bit. I see a tiny bit of shade. Where That's and I've actually cut some limbs back because of our our internet. Mm -hmm. Actually, because it, we were having problems. Yeah. So the, the reason why the utility bills are a lot higher for you guys out here, a lot of the time is... Ours are probably lower than most people. You're right. It's because the insulation a lot of the time. And that's typically the reason why the, the rates... You know, surprisingly, you, United Co-op has always been a really good yeah. company. And I mean, it just is. Yeah, and it, the utility company is like somebody that we rely on because they power our home. But since they... Brazos actually supplies our power now. Uh, you're a supplier. Yes, uh -huh. that's funny. he did, and I was. I'm very happy that we weren't going to get married, and my yeah. my job wouldn't let me put her on by. I went to work for another company, a big company, as a as one of the district managers, and uh, they wouldn't let me put her on my insurance. So, because gotcha. we were living together at that time, and I told her I'd come home one day. And I, I said, let's, will you marry me? And she said, looked at me kind of funny. And she goes, she kind of laughed. And I said, no, I'm serious. She said, what's the matter? And I well, thought we weren't going to do that. And I said, well, we, they won't let me put you on my We entry, were going to so. have to go to the courthouse anyway and file like a... In, uh, informal? Yeah, informal marriage. Informal marriage certificate. Which, it's the same marriage. thing as being married. So yeah. we just, we decided, well, hell with it. We'll just... Yeah. He yeah. says, I don't even take your last name. I said, I want to get rid of my last name. <laughs> of course, we could have gone to my maiden name, but... I told her, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be with anybody else anyway, so... Mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's good. And we've got 13 <laughs> years of marriage coming up <laughs> in awesome. October. We've got 16 grandchildren. Wow. Between the two of us, yeah. So you guys did a big Christmas. And big, no, we of, don't do Christmas. Don't do Christmas. No. But a, lot of, a lot of blessings. Too, too many kids. Well, we've gone back to doing family meals. Mm -hmm. But kids have way too much these days. Yep. yep. We, do we, need to, we need to take stuff away from children today. We yep. do bonds or silver I, coins. I always say starting from the bottom is not a deficit. It's a gift because when my dad... My parents got divorced at a young age, and he got down. Oh, that's to a us. funny story. Yeah, it was. My parents were married for 19 years. Mm -hmm. They were divorced for 14 years. Now They've they're... been married again for 31 years. That is wow. crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. yeah. It, it it is crazy. My, you know, like I said, they lived down front. My parents. My dad just celebrated his 85th birthday. 85th. Monday. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. And it, you know, it, that's that's our blessing every day, and that's yeah. I would still be working if it wasn't for my parents. Yeah, my uh, like when I met my wife, it was eleven years ago. I was um, one of the top um, people in my industry in the United States, and there was a company from Canada that kept being like, "Hey, I want you to come work for me," and I was like, "Dude, I'm I'm loyal. I gotta go. I'm with the customer. I gotta go. I gotta go." <laughs> And he goes, Taylor, don't hang up on me. How would you like to come to Machu Picchu, Peru? All expenses paid. I just want to meet you. I said, that well, sounds like Michael. I said, well, if you're going to invite me to Machu Picchu, Peru, I don't know if I want to work for you, but I'll definitely go. 
And that's when I met her down there. And at that time, I was emotionally unavailable. But <laughs> the way I looked at it was, I remember how good she treated me. And what? then, and I just always knew, like, she treated me, like, so good. Like, I mean, like, I went down there, she took care of me, made sure, like, nothing happened. And then I left. And then I, you know, continued with my life and kept building my career. And I don't know if you know um, the guy that started Tesla, Elon Musk. Um, his and Daryl knows all his, about his, him. Yeah. him. He his cousin started a company called Solar City. I started doing solar in 2014, and then she came and visited me, and I was like, "Well, she treated me good. Like I'll, I can I can hang out with her for a day." And then she had friends in Vermont, so I was going up there to visit a team. So I was like, "Oh yeah, I'll bring you up there." Uh, hung out with her for two weeks. She went to Germany to get her master's and then came back. We talked and then six months at a time Then she'd have to leave Then six months at a time Then she'd have to leave and then I was like, you know, this is the woman I want to have kids with so you Do y'all have children? Not yet. Um, not yet. Soon to, soon to be. Probably the next big move in my life. So <laughs> I'm 32, she's 33. I'm kind of getting that. She's nudging me left oh, yeah. and right. So, it's um, there. You know. so where are you from? So where do I look like I'm from? The islands. Yeah. 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 Yep. So yeah. right there where Maui threw the rock is where I was born. Yeah. Hawaii? Yeah. Yep. So um, I was born in Marcus, Samoa, Tonga. We used to work with a couple of boys that were from the islands. Yeah, I'm the smallest of my kind. Just, He's yeah. like, he was telling me today. I know. He's oh, the smallest. Oh, they're big boys. Oh, they yeah. are big boys. That's what I was saying. I was like, hey, this is a good guy to have in my corner if I ever got into a bar fight or and something. And you, like sweetheart, we are Mexican. You're Mexican? From Mexico or here? Uh, no, I was born here, but my parents are from Mexico. Cool. Full Mexico. Cool. <laughs> yep, and then Sam follows me around the country. Um, Sam is from Oregon originally. He documents everything. Oh, you damn Yankees. Yep, <laughs> damn Yankees. <laughs> yep. And then Brandon's from the good old state of Utah. The so, good old state yep. of Utah. Yeah, so that's a little bit about us, you know. 10, 10, 10, 10 o'clock at night, you got, uh, you yeah. know, four gentlemen and one young lady hanging out, so. Hey, it's it's a cultural diversity. Yep. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. And my nationality is Irish and German, so. Well, I'm German. It's okay, I'm German. German, yeah. yeah. You, are you uh, guten my, tag, guten morgen. Do you have an Oma and an Opa? My, or do you have one? My grand, my grandfather's parents came from Germany. Yep. Prussia is where my family is from. Wow, yeah. And my, that was disbanded in 1959. My my Oma, her name is Lori Schmidt, and my Opa's name is Sigmar Schmidt. And they've got, you know, the, the nice accents, but they're like in their 70s and they're the healthiest people. That's a, on my mom's side, her great grandmother was born on the ocean coming over here, and her name was Oceana. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, Oceana? Oceana. She was born Oceana. on the ocean. Really? Oh yeah. O C E A N A. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Never heard an Oceana and never heard an Ad it's Adlai. Yeah, Adlai. Adlai. I've Thank never you. I've never met an Adlai, so now I met an Adlai and never heard of Oceana too. So <laughs> um systems Listen looking people. pretty yeah. good, completely designed. Um all right, so is this the system right here or right here? So yeah, this is we max out the roof fiber panels. This is what they would need. It's just 36 panels. Okay, so uh, 60. Kind of go through the design with you. Take a quick look at this. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys use a, a lot of power here. So I kind of want to break down the way that this is the the way that the system will look for you. So that's the maxed out system. That's mm -hmm. basically putting everything on the roof. Now, this is the system that we designed. Um, obviously, you have the hip on the roof, right. so we designed it around here. So just mm -hmm. to confirm, the system would be this one right here? Yeah, yeah, so the okay. one on the, le on the left side. Right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the environmental effects, and not everybody cares about the environment. Most people do this for the savings, but vice versa. Like Some people don't care about the savings. People like the environment, but just kind of to show you, that's the environmental effects of this system. And that's kind of the way that we design the system. Now, the reason why we design the system like this, it looks like you guys have like some pipes right here in the back, these mm -hmm. four. Yep. So we designed the system where you're going to get a lot of your morning sun right in the back and then all the afternoon sun, you know, with 
Anywhere in an azimuth, if there was a 360 degree circle, we look for 80 to 280 being the prime positions where we actually put the panels. Uh, the system size is a 13.14 kilowatt system. Its estimated production is 16,965 kilowatts. Can somebody take 16,965 and divide it by 12 for me? So that's a 16,965 kilowatts is how much that system would produce. And 965, uh, do 16,965. Oh. One, six, nine, six, five. Divide by 12. So that system will produce on average 1,400 kilowatts a month. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm breaking it down to the ridiculous. Apples to apples. I want to keep this so simple enough a five-year-old can understand it. You know, the left side is going to indicate what you donate to the utility company. The right side is what you're going to start putting into a piggy bank and actually take equity. Rather than having a liability, it turns into an asset. Now, what happens is there's going to be some months where you produce more than you use, and it kind of works like... Uh, do you remember AT&T rollover minutes back in the day? If you don't oh, use yeah. them, you get them. So like there's some months where you produce more than you use and those get stored into a piggy bank. And then there's some months where you don't produce as much as you use and you start eating up those credits. So that's kind of the way the system works. Like I said, we either fill up the roof with panels or we get you 100% of your power from the electricity. Um, so this is the way that the system is designed. Now, kind of to break it down, your utility bill is going to continually go up, right? It just right now, it's probably at an average of 225. We're just going to say 200 as an even number. But a year, two years, three years down the road, uh, this price is just going to continue to creep on you. Um, so the idea is that we produce a system. And did you factor in a brand new roof on this? Uh, not yet, not quite. All right, so, so a brand new roof um, it would be composite shingle, and yeah. they'd want a gray roof. Oh, yeah, we could put that in there. So we'll add a, a roof in on this too, mm -hmm. um, because the system that he put is 36 total panels, and this is the total offset. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the maximum system that we put on is filling up the entire roof, and that's going to offset 61% of your electric bill. Okay, so what that means is you're still going to have a small electric bill. We completely filled up the roof with panels, and the way that we have it set up is 61% of your power is going to be produced from the solar panels, and you own that power. Obviously, if you go out and get an electric car, or you got a hot tub in the back, then that 61% goes down. Same that if you guys use less power, that 61% goes up. Um, but that's the maximum offset based on your usage um, and how we actually design the system, and it's 36 total panels, right? So this just shows you as the years go by what the electric bill goes to. Now, right now, we estimate that utility bill will eventually be $360 in five years. That's just with inflation continually go up. We estimate that in 10 years, people will pay $428 a month. And in 20 years, people will be paying over $600 for their electric bill. Um, it's the same way that gasoline prices continue to go up. That just kind of breaks down um, kind of what it is right now. Um, so the first thing is we show you your 25-year savings. Um, in a 25-year period, you know, we estimate that there would be a $30,000 savings at a bare minimum just based on where the prices are right now. Um, so are you able to factor in the roof and everything so I can show them um, the full everything, exactly what their monthly payment would be here? The yearly, I'll show you what the gross amount is, what the net account is. Now, are you both currently working, not working? Uh, I am, I drew my social early because I take care of my parents. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and the, the question, I don't mean personal here, it's all right. but do you guys have any sort of taxable income? I'm not oh, yeah. gonna, he all right, works. perfect. He works. So with taxable income, like for example, if you were W-2, you get money taken out of your check every week or every other week with a 1099, a C-Corp, an S-Corp, or an LLC, 
typically what happens is you have to pay Uncle Sam at the end of the year. All right, now when we explain the tax credit, understand we are not tax professionals, and that's something that I state to this family. However, I want to kind of gauge the situation whether or not they are going to benefit from taking the tax incentive. I always want them to agree with the month 19 price and understand that even if they don't get the tax credit, that they can still see the value of ownership rather than taking their money and flushing it down the toilet. Okay. Yeah, we know really. that. Yep, so <laughs> the idea is that the tax credit credit is meant to be applied back into the system okay some people it's not meant to go to Vegas to play slots but keep in mind if you were like hey I've got this thing on my bucket list you know me and my wife wanted to do this trip together some people take the tax credit and they do whatever they want with it right or you just defer it right back into the system and that helps keep the monthly cost uh, to the absolute lowest um, where you know you own your power and you don't have to deal with any sort of uh, rate increases or anything like that. So um, he's going to factor in the brand new roof. Um, what we do is we wait until we get the utility approval first because if the utility denied the project, like if we put a new roof on then the utility denied the oh, project yeah, right. and it's, yeah. it's just not doesn't make sense for us and we use our company resources. Um, a little bit about what we do is we're fully integrated, meaning like we don't subcontract the work. We don't have like uh, sub dealers or anything like that. You know, everything is done in house, and you know the benefit of working with one company rather than somebody being like, oh well, that wasn't us that did it. You have to call the subcontractor, and then the subcontractor so well, you have to call the other subcontractor. I'm the contractor around here. <laughs> yep. Cool. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, so, Sandy, do you guys have, just quick, real quick, do you guys have a homeowner's insurance? Yes. yes. Okay, so you guys do have it, okay. So, what, well, we have our own roofers. What they can do is, what most people do out here in Texas is wait for that big hailstorm and then help you guys file that claim. We have already received a payment yeah, on this roof. Well, it's right, just a whole lot like less than what it was going mm -hmm. mm. so to cost. How much did they, um, how much was the roof? going to cost for you guys to well of course we were going to put a metal roof on it oh yeah, yeah. and that was going to be 10 grand yep to have corrugated metal. corrugated metal well sheet metal sheet metal yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it would have been an r panel the idea is i always tell people the panels absorb the sunlight it protects the roof hey my dad was a sheet metal worker yeah yep. I, yeah no, i know no. what you're you're saying so like you could do the metal if you really wanted to but like the panels are going to be over so that's yeah. the kind of the way that we well and that's yeah all right so this is the way that we kind of got it all set up um so ultimately we utilize you as a model home um first off before i go into this um would you have any issue with us using you as a reference no, no. non-disclosure obviously not bragging to the neighbors saying that we paid all the upfront costs oh, yeah and no. then it, it doesn't have to but like if we could keep one of the signs out like by yeah. the road that no. kind of helps us out um, because we've had so many inquiries and then people realize that more and more solar is happening so the way I was able to factor this in, and like I said, it's not always feasible for people to cut their costs when they turn ownership and then get a new roof out of the deal, but we try to get you the best of both worlds. So this is a 13.14 kilowatt system. The system's gonna produce the 16,965 kilowatts. That's a 61% offset. So keep in mind, you're still gonna get a, a small electric bill. You're still gonna have 39% uh, right. of what you pay for your power is still gonna be there because we maximize the roof face space that we can use. Um, the way we were able to kind of do this where, you know, you know, it's kind of like you kind of weigh it out, but um, we were able to do it where it basically would come out to six bucks a week for you to go solar. Um, it's $226 a month. You would redirect, which you may be at 225 right now. And in a couple years, that's just gonna continue to go up. But the fixed monthly payment to own the system, getting the new roof on, um, would be $226, all right? Um, can somebody do 226 times 12? Gotcha. So, I was never good at math. I had a 1.8 GPA, so. 226 times 12? Yep. Okay, so this is going to be the monthly payment. The monthly payment would be two twenty six dollars For fixed. how long? So it's 300 months. It's 25-year fixed payment. At the end of the 25 years, you don't pay anything. You own the system compared to a never-ending bill with the utility and company. taking 61% of the electric off of us. No, yep. that's, yeah. And, and 
So what is the interest rate on that? It's a 1.49%. Um, ultimately, okay. as a model home, we don't do the 4.99, the 5.99. Um, the interest rate is 1.49%. Now, the eligible tax credit is pretty big for you guys. It's a $19,683 tax credit. Okay. Now, there's a couple things you can do with this tax credit. What most people do is they either get the money back from Uncle Sam and defer it into the system, or instead of paying Uncle Sam, they defer it into the system. Now, if the tax credit was something where you're like, like for example, some people have credit card debt and they pay a bunch of interest on it. If they wanted to use that tax credit for their credit card or they wanted to go on a trip, that's up to you. You have the next 18 months to figure out what you want to do with that tax credit. Months 1 through 18, your fixed payment is 226. If you take the tax credit and apply it back into the system, the fixed monthly payment would stay at 226. That's not going to increase. If you said, hey, let's take this 19 grand, let's go do something fun with it, on the 19th month, your fixed payment would go to 309. That's what it would be adjusted to. But if we to. put this back towards, then it it's going to stay at 226. At 226. Yes. But I always show people, because you have 18 months to figure out what you want to do with that, if you keep the 19683 on the 19th month, the fixed payment would go to um, 309 without the tax credit, See, which most people that, just applied into the system. That makes no sense because I'm saving money by applying it back to there over Correct. 25 years. But if, say, you had something on your bucket list where you, you know, maybe you wanted to buy a new RV with it, something, we, I don't know. Is this a one time tax credit? It's a one time tax credit, yes. And it, you have five years to claim it. So, say, if you're only eligible to get like five, six grand the first year, six grand the second year, six grand the third year, that's based on your federal income tax. I'm not an accountant. I can't give you, hey, this is what you should do with it. But if you only get five grand of this and you put it back in, is my payment going to go up? It would, but it wouldn't go to 309. It would be adjusted between 226 and 309. Okay. Now, for example, you know, if you're making like 80 to 100 grand a year or something, or 60 grand, you know, the amount of taxes that you have for taxable income, that's not going to expire. So you could apply it or you could prepay into the system to get this 226 down. The inflation would be zero, and I always try to compare the apples to apples. So your, your net system cost over the time with the roof and the panels, instead of the $72,000 if the power just continued to go up, that's just based on, a, on, a, on the power not going up, the, the net system cost would be $56,022. That's what you would pay over time net to own the system, to own the brand new roof. And then the, the gross, if you decided to keep the, the tax credit, would be 75706. So that just shows you the gross and the net of what the system is over time. You're not paying any of that up front. The idea is the 226 is the fixed payment. Every time you pay the 226, it gets put into a piggy bank. The piggy bank starts to full fill, and then you're redirecting away from this to this. Okay, okay. so this is a 25-year loan. Yep. Uh, if something happens to one of us, or both of us, what happens to that? system goes with the house. So the new homeowner would take over the system, they would get the appreciation value of the home. Obviously, that if you already apply the tax credit, that goes into the system. If you keep the tax credit, then that's yours. So if something happens, you know, the way you have to look at it is, we're eliminating 61% of this, and it goes into ownership. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking at that. Yeah. I'm, you know, if I'm something, looking at if the something, other. If something happens to you, it's the same way that, you know, when people upgrade their kitchen, it, it, it goes with the house. The, mm -hmm. the panels stay with the house. Same if you move, it transfers over the same way that uh, basically the utility company would. So that really shows you the, the apples to apples comparison of both situations. And keep in mind, we get you approved from the utility company before anything is finalized. Right. Um, we're not, uh, if if we pay this, if, if we get this tax credit uh -huh. and we put it back into the system, does the price go up later on? No. It, it would stay at, at 226. That's what he, that's what he was so, saying. Okay. So right here, yeah. you, starting sure. month 19, with the voluntary tax credit, it would stay at the 226. Now keep in mind, after we get the approval and we install it, 
we're not uh, you're not going to see the 226 until 60 days after the physical installation because we don't want you to be ever double built like the idea is you know if we turn that system on 30 days later you get 30 days of it producing power and your first fixed payment of the 226 comes 60 days after the physical but the, installation the system will not be done if the if the Electric company says that they're not going to do it at all. Yeah, we won't even install the roof if they do that. Yeah. Um, I'll know that in about five days. So I'll submit an application today for you guys. We'll wait to see what they get approved. If they give me the thumbs up, then we're going to call you to schedule an installation after the system isn't. Well, actually, what we'll do is we'll schedule your roof, and then 14 days later, we'll schedule the solar. Um, because, like I said, we have to allow the new roof to bake in. So notice the framing and the future pacing, being able to understand the next steps of the process. I want to assume, I want to seed, I want to involve them, and I want to tell them what's going to happen. And as long as they don't stop me, I understand that it's going to benefit their situation, and we're helping them. That's going to cost us, that's going to run us about $300 a month max, because 61% of our electric bill now, on the cheaper months, is going to be down there around $50 is what we're going to have to end up paying yeah. on electric. And mm -hmm. on the high months, it's going to be $100. And the way I always put it is a lot of people, in the normal situation is a lot of families are willing to invest more to go solar because they turn the liability into an asset, like when people rent a home for 1000 a month and then they own a home for 1300 because all the money gets put into a piggy bank, you own it, and you're not at the mercy of 61% of your power. I'd love to get you 100%, it's just the way that your home is, the roof space, I, I completely filled up the roof with panels. You put a roof over on that place over there. On that side? Yeah, on panels over there. Yeah. I got a shop out there. Yeah, um, how far is the, the shop actually? It's a little bit far. There's it's no a little bitty shop. There's no it's meter on it. It's a little shed, no. No meter on it? Okay. Yeah. No, we got a meter on that shop, but that one's covered up by yeah, trees. Up. Yeah. Yeah. That, little, that, that little shed down. right there is 20 by... Is there a meter on it? No. no. They'd have to do trenches. It's going to end up costing you more. I wouldn't. I always say you got to stay on the roof. Trenching. Trenching, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trench you. We got a trencher. <laughs> right now we couldn't dig it. <laughs> so this is the exact situation. Um, the next step is I do have to qualify you guys. Um, the way I do that is um, you are on the deed of the home. You're not wanted burglars. You don't have any arrest warrants in North Dakota or anything like that. No. Um, <laughs> and then you guys have not you guys last, have uh, not in the last twenty years. Not in the last twenty. Not that anybody knows about. I would say mm -hmm. that. Um, and then we just verify you have above the 650 credit score. Um, and as long as they give us the thumbs up, um, then the idea is we you know, start moving forward. We use our company resources. Next week, I'll have a surveyor pop by. He'll fly a drone above the home. He'll take all the measurements. Um, we'll have it arranged. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have to have people, you have to let me know because that's... Yeah, we don't want him showing up with a gun at the drive. Well, it's not just that, but but my life is based around my parents' mm -hmm. doctor's she, she appointments. Same well, size gun, I do. What we'll do, much. What we'll do is... <laughs> the, the office is closed right now, um, but what will happen is... Um, like I mentioned, I travel all over, right? Reggie's going to manage your project. He's going to be the one here on the day of your install. He's so gonna are be you the from one. around here? Yeah, yeah. We're right here in Eulis, but our uh, office is got a big 25,000 square foot office in uh, Arlington. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. office and warehouse. Yeah. So he's basically will manage the project, you know, and ultimately all I really do is help you guys create the decision by showing you both situations. And that's what it is. So there is no more, there is no less. Um, the next step is we just verify um, that you guys are on the deed of the home, that you guys have the decent credit. Like I said, we might have to tr uh, trim a little bit on the front tree. Um, there would be no I'm cost. I'm always trimming trees. Well, we'll yeah. do that for How you. How do we do the credit deal? Because I, I really don't like giving my social security number. You don't have to give me your social security. Um, what we do is um, the we, last four. we do the date of birth, and then I'll give you the computer. You type in the last four, and you press enter. I never see it. Okay. So, okay. Um, so Pops, we going to put it in your name? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the best email address that you guys use? Use yours, babe. You uh, access it from your iPhone? Or... Yep, so that all looks so great. That all looks good. D A R R E L L. Okay. 
two R's, two L's. She's going to sleep over there. Not at all. Okay. She says, I'm bored with this shit. <laughs> okay. Um, so, roughly pre tax annual income. Roughly. 107. Somewhere 107. Mm. Okay. Oh, you died. Are, are you saying you want to make that much money that you're not? I'm saying I think my mom put me up for adoption and you guys are looking for another kid. <laughs> <laughs> you used to make three times that. <laughs> three I, times that? I, I'm going to tell you, we have two four legged oh, children man. in the bedroom back there. And everybody tells us when they die, they want to come back as our dogs. <laughs> they get their supper. They get food. everything, huh? Our do we cook for our dogs. Wow. For supper. You got our a 14-year-old pit bull back here. That's you got a pit bull back there? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Both, nice. both of the dogs that we have now are, are pit mixes. Wow. We just lost a 14-and-a-half-year-old German Shepherd this year. Oh, yeah. But they sleep on $200 beds. Wow. wow. <laughs> Like, you guys own the home free and clear, you have a monthly mortgage. We have a monthly mortgage. So you know, roughly four <laughs> fifty, I don't think it's that much. Four fifty, it's okay. Um primary residence. Um annual income from both views the one oh seven? No, I draw my social which is another eleven 1 hundred plus a month. Alright, so we'll say two twenty thirteen. Fourteen, fine, it's close. Um, and then you're employed. Yep. Okay. Eco Vapor. You, you Eco Vapor is the name. Yep. E C O V A P O R. Yep. All right. And then your job title. Texas Superintendent. T X Superintendent. Yeah, this company wanted me to come out to Colorado and meet me because they saw my resume, so I went out. I was nice. actually. I, w I was actually in between. I wasn't. I was tired of the oil field. This was when we got back from Montana. Yeah. And then length of employment there. Five years. Five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, date of birth. Month. Eight. Eight. Thirty-one. Ugh, I keep typing that. Eight. Thirty-one. Fifty-eight. Nineteen fifty-eight. Okay. All right. Everything looks good there. Um, next, I have you type type in on the screen the last four right there, and then what you'll do is scroll down, and then. Uh, I didn't do it. Yeah, it's got to be on this. I keep pressing the key keyboard oh, too. Yeah. I did it like three times. Okay. No. All right. Now what we're gonna do? This is just like FedEx. Uh, you know, we're gonna verify that you have over the 650. We're gonna verify you're on the deed of the home. And what we are going to do is just submit the application. All right. We are going to be getting an email here in a second where it's either going to give us the green or it's going to give us the red. Mm -hmm. um, now, we'll see what it says here. The spinning wheel of death. <laughs> you think you're about an 800 score? Did you get it from Goodly? Oh yeah. 787, yeah. Let's see. Sometimes it's slow, so. And that's probably, probably low. Box. That's, uh, it's probably higher than that. Okay. What's yeah. that, babe? My back up. Oh. Oh, you really got it. Okay, so. So, um, we're gonna have to do an adjustment on this. Is that going to need to be adjusted? Yeah. Um, All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Looks good. So, from the gross? Does it look like you went over? Okay, so does that have to be adjusted at all? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> All right. I mean, we can. Here we go down this way, just in case, because it doesn't show show up red. Okay, so mm. 
Yeah, look at that. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a quick question. You're going to answer yes to the next question. You did not know I was going to ask you. Just say yes. You're on a fixed income? Yes. Okay, cool. So we made a little bit of an adjustment here where the, the fixed monthly payment is actually going to go from 226 to 221 Nothing to write home about. But it's going to be uh, five bucks less. Hey, five bucks is five bucks. Five bucks yeah. is five bucks. <laughs> um, it's all five dollar foot long. I'm all about the pennies. <laughs> all right. Can I look at that last page again just to make these adjustments? Uh, you want to go back here? Yep. Now, something okay. I didn't ask. Mm -hmm. Is my electric company going to be able to back out of this once y'all start it? Once y'all get it approved the first time? No. Okay. They, once you get the approval, um, we connect to the meter. Um, you know, you're, 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 you, you have the system installed and it's connected. It's now uh, hooked to the system. So that 75706 uh, dropped to 73752. The uh, federal tax credit drops from 19683 to 19175, And then if you didn't uh, apply the tax credit and kept it, that 309 drops to a 301. So just to kind of show you if oh, yeah, you did. But with what, with what we can put on the house, we are never going to receive 100%, which is fine. Yeah, it's just if you had a if you had a huge roof space, then we're able to do it. But normally a lot of families do this that can do yeah, can 20, 30. It. And it's just, yeah. you know, that's what it kind of breaks down to. Um, so you, 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 you are qualified. I'm going to get your application submitted. Um, you know, if they deny you, um, you're stuck. There's nothing I can do. Oh, that's fine. We and, and, that. and there's this, like, you know, the good thing about it is the homes that I do get denied are because of the transformers. If you had six solar systems and a little cul-de-sac and they had all been basically stressing that transformer, the power company is not going to come out and upgrade the transformer. So the second person can build their own transformer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've got one out here. We've got one out here and one up on the other house up here. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're in the boonies, y'all. <laughs> so the next step is we are going to um, send you a form to your phone real quick, and that's going to show you the 221 fixed payment. It's going to show you the uh, 73752 gross system cost. Uh, and then the 54576 for the net. And then um, is that sending over to his phone? Yeah, now? so you're going to get a, get a, um, an agreement from uh, from Goodleap. And then all you're going to do is just check it off. Basically, the first part of it is going to be just about the numbers. Make sure that those numbers that we're talking about is it's the same ones that's on that paper. I have a battery in the car. <clears throat> the next part is that. Um, they're gonna you're gonna you're gonna roll in membership so you'll be a member of Good Leap. That way you can check your always go and check your check your account. Third thing is that you're giving us access and permissions to come out and check the roof and and be able to um, to put the panels up or the roof up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the third biggest part is just you guys are gonna give us permission to do that. So that should come in, it should say good leap. Okay. Oh yeah, yep. and they'll go review the docs. Just kind of show you this. Mm -hmm. We always call it follow the yellow brick road. So you'll press um, that that box right there. And you're gonna go to continue. All right, and then you're gonna press the blue button up here that says start. Uh, the one under that. Yep. All right, so that's gonna be uh, the total amount. Uh, it's actually two twenty four thirty two. So that's going to be your fixed payment, 22432. It's a 25-year fixed payment. Um, the interest is 1.49%. If you don't take the tax credit and you do something with it, on the 19th month, the amount would adjust to 306.33. Um, so that just shows you exactly the gross system cost and then exactly what the monthly payments are. And then um, you click that top box, um, which is the first uh, OK that we need on this. You just kind of like uh, scribble like FedEx in that box or it auto populates. Oh, and by the way, my daughter in law is in trouble because she told me 
the it, if we signed up that she got five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So she. But does, she didn't tell me that up front. She does. That's what I do. Same if you if you refer to me. So you got to tell her to bring you for a nice dinner. So yeah. um, same that if, if you guys refer anybody, it's it's five hundred too. So um, I was I always do that for people. Um, this shows you that. Yep. So scroll down. It's just going to keep going to the next box. Um, so if you scroll down here, that'll show you the first month will be the two twenty four. Um, all the way through the first 18 months will be the 224. If you apply the tax credit into the system, it stays at that amount. If you don't apply the tax credit, the 19th to the 300th month will be adjusted to 306, just to kind of show you. On the 301st month, you don't have any sort of payment because you own the system outright. If you wanted to pay the system off early, produce all your power, you can always do that. So that explains to you all of that. Um, and then this blue box will get you to the next check box. Now, if they do, if the electric company doesn't approve it, this is not correct. And then there's then we there's nothing. We're so not putting on the new roof. These nothing. are our children. I'll give it to you right. I there. should have the utility application back sometimes in like four days. Obviously, I work in a ton of different utility companies, so it may take a little longer. Um, the target for the actual installation, uh, Reggie, for the roof, when would yeah. that be? If we get the utility application, the permitting, everything's good, when could we put the new roof on? The new roof should be good by yeah. SAP. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Fast. For the most part, unless I have stuff with my parents, yeah. I'm okay. home. So once we have the survey and the engineering and we get the utility approval, we'll put on the new roof, let's say, two, three weeks. Let's, it might be earlier, but I'd rather say two, three weeks on the I'm roof, to out and then two, to... three more weeks later for the solar. Yep. I gotta find it, babe. Because I don't have any checks. I don't know. we can search just by typing your bank name in Texas. So if you type in your bank name on Google. you need is a bank account. All, yeah, all I need is the account number because the the routing number we can find just by typing in your your state and the actual bank. Yeah, have you got the uh, account number? Yeah, it's, it's all right here. Right? So you want to research what bank do you use? This is that. What? No, you just have to type in the. Oh, that's the that's the that's bank. That's the co-op. <clears throat> no, you gotta type in the bank and then Texas routing, and then they're all the same. Well, we got it. Yeah, no, Wells Fargo is not all the same. We we discovered that a while back. I thought it was the routing number, but it, really? Yeah. Yeah. So the account routing number goes on file. You click next, next, and then finish, and then. That will complete that document, and then once that form is complete, um, the utility application, um, which will probably, I mean, it might be Tuesday because obviously, right. you know, Sunday, yeah. Monday's a Memorial Day, um, and then um, myself or Reggie will follow back up with you. I'll be here. Um, we'll let you know what date we're going to put on the roof. Um, please, like, please go above and beyond for them. We'll like, be mm -hmm. there for every part of the process. Um, the one thing about Reggie is you're not going to find somebody that's going to work harder to make sure everything works good. Hey, we know how most those island boys work. Oh, yeah. yes, we do. We do. Yes, we do. <laughs> you <laughs> might want to put my number down also, I'll Reggie, because Daryl is out in Midland through the week, and coming out here is going to have to revolve around my schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my number is not. I was, I was the equipment manager, and so the island boys had to work for me. Hmm. And I, I, I've Were been you hard a, on them? I, I am a very hard taskmaster. <laughs> Believe me. my shop manager. Uh -huh. I am very hard. Okay. That's I, I said, you know, I, I worked for a cable company making telephone cable for 10 years. I started out in the D.C. and we actually cut telephone cable to order for customers and everything. Well. Some of our cable was as big around as Reggie's arm. Wow. I cut them with hand cutters. I did not use a pneumatic <laughs> air cutter. <laughs> and when guys had to work for me, they had to cut it that way. They did not want to train with me. That's funny. At all. Mm-hmm. I said, I was not as big as she is. 
-hmm. at nearly 50. But you were tough because of you growing up being yeah uh, working on a farm. That's hard work. It is. What was your normal day like? You started at like early in the morning? Like it is now? Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I got up before I went to school, tended to my animals, you know, went to school, got off the school bus, got on my horse and tended to my animals and day ended at 8 o'clock at night. And what kind of animals? Just... Oh, we had everything. We had cows, we had horses, we had pigs, we had dogs, we had chickens. Yeah, my dad, my dad raised and trained bird dogs. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Pretty cool. You said hunting and fishing, that's the way that's I grew up. That's how you grew up, up. Yeah. exactly. So I, I want to show you this video, actually. There was this family, actually, if you could. Let me see your phone real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's pretty funny, actually. These, this family we helped earlier. Um, I've set up a few of them already today. But so this is, let me try to see if it works. I'll pull it up here in a second. Yeah, it's, I want to show you this video, but I, had a, I always ask this final question, and um, what I'll do is—is is everything completed on your end, or? It's, oh yeah, it's pretty much. Yep. Okay. You just gotta ask, uh, do a little check out, but pretty yeah, everything's good. On we there. need to call them to schedule the site survey. Yeah. Is that going to be on Monday? We're gonna do check out right now. Monday's Memorial Day. Yeah. Yep. Check out. So if we can't do the call because it's pretty late right now, we'll do it Monday. And they'll call you like around 11.30 on Monday. They make sure we didn't make any promises to come back and yeah. mow the grass or, you know, something like that. Or Come on, I can put you on the tractor with the brush hog and send you down back. Back, back 20. <laughs> That's right. The back 20 needs mowed. All right. Mm. Um, are all the forms completed or any other forms? All the forms completed? are good. All right, so all the forms are completed on this end. And I, I always ask this final question, okay? And I, I need you to really think about this and just answer it however you feel, okay? If I was to snap my fingers right now, you had a brand new roof, you had the solar put up there, and it was all completed, right? You knew that you had that uh, fixed amount of that 220, 22 and then somebody was walking down the driveway to be shot and they rang the doorbell that we don't have and it was United Co-op and they tried to convince you to rip the solar panels off the roof rip the new roof off the roof and go back to your current situation what would you say I wouldn't make it down the driveway <laughs> you hear my answer right <laughs> See, the first time I was in Texas, she goes, are you familiar with Texas sayings? And she's like, bless your heart, you blank idiot. <laughs> right? So I always pose that question because it's like me going up to somebody that has it and trying to convince them to rip it off. And, you know, the idea is now you're, you're independent from 61% of the utility company. And obviously, if you start using a little less power, then that number okay, goes up. Okay, so, so if we did like an awning or something off the back, we could still add solar panels. The thing is, is the back, uh, uh, or even the front. The, there, there may well, be. Well, the front's going to have trees if we did. Yeah, the, the idea is the way that the azimuth of the roof faces. You know, that's the maximum uh, offset that we can do for for this type of home. Um, you know, obviously, when they come and do the site survey and put on the new roof, if there was a way that we would be able to add panels, you know, we would come back and let you know that, but. Um, we approved you for the maximum amount, uh, part of the redirection program. Right. Um, so in this situation, um, with the roof, with the panels, um, that's pretty much the maximum. Well, situation. even sixty-one percent. You know, I mean, yep. that's. What I need to do is go ahead and put the carport out there, and uh, where we park at. Oh yeah. And fill it up. Because okay. I can get panels. Right. So that's how it works. What flavor is that? Blueberries and cream. Blueberries, Blueberries and cream. And cream. Yeah. But I did atomic bomb oh, to begin <laughs> with. What's atomic bomb? Cinnamon. Cinnamon? That was mine until I decided I was done with it. Yeah. And this is the only one that doesn't bother him too much yeah. anymore.
But I made a one on my nicotine. Yeah. But just, I dipped just Copenhagen, the, keeps, Copenhagen for keeps, 35 keeps years. Keeps the edge off. Keeps the edge off. So. <laughs> Pretty much. I said, I dipped Copenhagen for it 35 years. Oh, yeah. I'm on Copenhagen now, yeah. It stopped me from Oh, smoking. I missed my Copenhagen. I'm two Copen. weeks. I'm two weeks good right now. I I missed my Copenhagen. Believe yeah. me. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I put Big Reggie. I think you'll remember that. Nah. And then uh, <laughs> that's my. I'll song. enter your number, your name into my phone, and yeah. it'll let you through that one. And see, okay. you did not oh, come yeah. up as Taylor on mine. Came up it, as Timothy. Yes. It's my dad. <laughs> Yep, I pay, all right. I took over the cell phone plan for my dad, so I cover his, and I go by Timothy when I call, but it's Taylor. My my mom was going to name me Taylor, whether there was a boy or a girl. I didn't have an option, so you know what? It's Taylor. I'll take it, you know, so. Right. I'm a big M, little c, capital C. I'm a Mick, so I'm a McCarthy, as we say in Boston. So. So how have you managed to kind of change your accent when you're out around? Well, if I have a couple drinks, which happens about once a year, I'll be talking like this. And if you find your time here, we'll all be asking about putting on the roof, okay? Because we're over here from Boston, South Boston, live in Pepperell, Massachusetts. That's, I went to Rhode Island when I was working for the cable. I was on the safety committees and everything and we went up there for yep, for smallest work. state in the, in the United yeah, States. Yeah, but you know, we were all around up in that area and, and it was quite interesting to mm -hmm. listen to people talk. Yeah, it is. It's, when you've never been anywhere. Well, I like the way the people from Texas talk, you know, and people are like super friendly, like usually because like you got to realize like a lot of the time Sometimes I have ten people shadowing me. Like this is actually pretty chill. I went to I went to one. They had twenty six people. They're like, can we have as many people as we want shadowing? I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter. And then a whole busload of kids comes out. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I have had some crazy things happen to me. I had a guy that just got out of prison. It's like, he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, I'm a little outnumbered right now. I was like, bro, it's me and three kids with Hawaiian shirts. He's like. <laughs> My boys are on their way right now, and I'm like, bro, like, your boys are going to come, and you're going to see three kids with Hawaiian shirts that are doing solar. I was like, I didn't even I didn't even talk to the guy. I was talking to one of his neighbors. I had another guy that, like, chased me in the street. I, I, I started a YouTube channel, actually, uh, last year, and, you know, what I look at is I'm 32 years old, and a lot of the you're people that... I am, but I'm sometimes the old guy in the room because these 18, 19 year olds that are doing this, they were they, they were five years old when I started to do this profession. So, you know, well. it's uh, it's kind of fun, you know. So I'll, I'll give you guys the YouTube channel and you guys can check it out. And uh, you know, we utilize the the, the filming for training um, for other individuals. That's cool. And then you know, the YouTube channel is like kind of like the entertainment. Um, so if you guys want to subscribe to the YouTube channel, you guys got to like and subscribe to that, the videos. That, that's like you say. It said you love the Texas accent. That's Texas. Like when Welcome it, to Texas. That's my like name when is I'm, Taylor. <laughs> when I'm talking about y'all come back. When I'm talking to my truck, my Uconnect, uh -huh. my GPS, I, I say it does not understand redneck. <laughs> it cannot understand what I'm saying. Doesn't talk redneck. Yeah. <laughs> Southern redneck. Eco Vapor, the company I work for, uh, mm. we are the only ones in the world that can do it. And what we do is we take 100% of the oxygen out of the gas wow. so they don't have to flare anymore. Wow, that's a pretty cool concept. Yeah. And we're yeah. the only ones in the world that can do it. And the young man that invented it is the, one of the owners. It's called Eco Vapor? Eco Vapor Recovery Systems. How do they do that? Uh, it's a, we have a, a system that we put up on location. Gotcha. It's permanent, permanently mounted, and they run the gas through it, and uh, we have a catalyst. It's like a big catalytic converter is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we have a catalyst inside, and we heat the, the gas up to 525 degrees, which makes the catalyst react with oxygen, and it destroys it. Wow. And uh, we, we do work for a, a, a Exxon Mobil, we do work for Shell, Conoco, all the big mm -hmm. guys. And, uh, well, it seems like a, a recession proof business. Well, right now I've got 80 something. That it is. Yeah. That because, seems like a need for Well, it. they are, you know, because of the economy and uh, 
emissions. Emissions, you know, they are not wanting people to flare, you know, environmental friendly. Throwing stuff at us. You, you hear thing, that? The last thing. Yeah, press on the wait, yeah, the, right. the last part of the agreement is I take a photo with every single family that I help. Oh my gosh. So we read one. Uh, right. Now, right? <laughs> Look at this boy. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. All right, so congratulations to Daryl and the Moyers family. Uh, they have the solar installed as we speak, right? I really focused on five critical fundamentals, the clarity, the repetition, the energy, the belief, and the service. You know, walking into this house at 10, 10, 15 at night, I knew that I needed to create that decision because it is a better situation that we were able to put them in. So selling you guys are in a, the one of the best professions in the world you guys are helping people on a bill they're never ever going to cancel they are more persuaded by my attitude belief and conviction than any sort of product knowledge or technical skills but if i can transcend certainty and i can eliminate the fear help them relax through the process congratulations to the moyers you guys got solar